Okay, this is um, the shading that we'll be making today. So this is rendered in cycles at one sample, no bounces except for transparency because I used one remarching object as you can see. Um, so yeah, why is this working at one sample and not getting noisy? Because we're not using any BSDFs. So really what we need, uh, what we did is make our own shader. So this is the node group that we're going to be making. Well, not really exactly this node group, simplified version of this, but um, I will give you the blend file in the description, probably via Google Drive or something. So the node group looks sort of complicated, but it really isn't. It's really just applying our intuition of how light should work and then um, using some maths to get that reflected into a real shader. So um, let me show you a little demo that I made in processing. So as you can see, as I move this my mouse around, um, this green line rotates. So this green light represents um, a surface and the blue line represents the normal to that surface and the red line represents the direction where the light is coming from. So the background represents how bright the surface is, right? And as you can see when the normal is perpendicular to the um, red line, the, the, well, the background is black, zero, right? Nope. It's just like when you shine a flashlight and you shine it parallel to the surface, then obviously the surface is not gonna get lit up. But as you start moving the flashlight downwards, and making it more and more perpendicular to the surface, not to the normal, but to the surface itself, then um, the flashlight, that you, or the light that you see on the ground gets brighter and brighter. So that's really what um, this is doing. So the way you calculate, calculate how um, two vectors are aligned is by using the dot product. Um, the dot product also takes into account the length of the vector. That's why we'll need to normalize it, which just means make the length one. Because when you do the dot product, you're really multiplying by the length at the end. But if the length is one, then you're just multiplying by one. So we're only looking at how much they're aligned and nothing else. Um, so yeah, let's get go into Blender. Oh yeah, some one thing before I forget. Um, you can see that like I'm not allowing it to the surface to rotate fully because negative values don't make sense. So I'm stopping it at zero. So we'll need to take account into account that um, the dot product should remain positive or at least non-negative. So let's find Blender here. So um, let me just select everything and hide it and add in a monkey. Then I'll give this shade smooth and press ctrl 2 to add some subdivisions so select everything and then period to zoom in okay so this is our node group now for this we're going to be using the geometry because really we're basing our shading on the geometry of the object and not on the coordinates so this is the position which is really the position of the object in the world space so if I move this around you can see that the position is based really on the world around it and not on the object itself. The normal gives us the normal and the incoming gives us a vector which points from the pixel to the camera. That's why it's called incoming because it's going into the camera. So the first thing we need to do is get some sort of diffuse lighting. And um, to get the diffuse lighting, we need to find the alignment with the light source and um, the normal, like I showed in the demo. So first we need some sort of light source. For this, I'm going to use a combine XYZ, which is going to represent um, the position of the light. So we can see, put a light at something um, like this, um, which is somewhere over here maybe make it a bit higher. We can always change this later. And to get the direction, we're going to need um, to start using some vector math. So really, if you subtract two vectors, you're getting a direction. So let's subtract these two. 
This will give us the direction towards the light source. And then we need to take the dot product with what? The normal. And now you can see that we'll get some sort of basic rudimentary diffuse shading. So really this is just the diffuse shading. And then we can um, multiply this by a color to um, get the diffuse color. So this is really just like a factor. So next thing we need to do is to add some kind of reflection or some specular highlights. Well, not real reflections. So yeah, just um, a highlight. And the thing with highlights is as you move around, as the camera moves around, the highlight doesn't stay fixed on the object. The diffuse shading, no matter where I move, it gets fixed on the object. But really the highlights, how much we can see of it depends on how much the reflected light aligns with our um, view. So let me open the image editor. So this is um, the formula or basic formula for this Fong shading method, which you can find on Wikipedia. And there's this term here, which um, shows a dot product with V, which stands for like the view direction and R, which stands for the reflected vector. So instead of uh, taking the light direction and the normal, we're taking the reflected vector and the view direction. So how do we get this reflected vector? It's rather simple. We just reflect the incoming, well, not the incoming, sorry. We reflect the direction of the light. So to change, we need to add a normalized node here. That way we're sure that we're using a length of one and the normal is normalized as is normal with normals. <laughs> so as you can see, reflect, and if I hover over it, it says reflect A around the normal B. So B, this would be the A socket and this is the B. So we should put the normal into the B. And this will give us the reflected. So as I move this around the reflections change. And now we need to compare this with the incoming. So we'll need to add a dot product and then plug the incoming into here. But as you can see, the highlights are at the wrong side, right? The light is up here, as you can see based on the diffuse, but the incoming is on the bottom. So we'll need to um, flip the reflected vector around, which you can do easily by scaling by minus one. And then if you plug this into here, now it's um, pointing in the right direction. And as I move around, you can see that the reflections don't stay in place, but they actually change depending on what angle I'm looking at it. So this will be our specular. So let's rename this and this will be our diffuse. Now, one thing that's really important is these values can be negative, but negative light doesn't make sense unless you're trying to create some sort of black hole. So we'll need to make sure that everything remains greater or equal to zero. So we'll add a, a math node and set it to greater than zero, which will tell us if the diffuse node is greater than zero. And then we can um, multiply this by the diffuse itself. So now the diffuse will always be greater than or equal to zero. And we can use this factor as well for the specular because the specular, it only makes sense to have highlights at the part where there is actually some sort of light source. So otherwise we'll get all sorts of weird problems. And we'll also need to check if the specular itself is greater than zero. So we'll need to multiply. Let's put this into here, this into here, and this into here. So now you can see the specular is only at the part where there is actually diffuse lighting. While if I um, remove this second one, let me change the sockets around and mute it. You can see that the specular is all over the place, which doesn't make sense. So we need this one as well. Now we need to get some color, which is really easy. Just add a color node and then um, we can use the scale node because really color and um, vectors, they're pretty much the same thing. 
So this is sort of like a factor for the diffuse, how bright is the diffuse lighting at this point. And now changing this will give us some color. But obviously this looks really flat. Well, no, no object looks like this, there should be some highlights. So that's where this specular part comes in, which is really like the shininess. So it's normal, we can, if we want, we can add a color for the specular. At the same time, we can also just leave the specular as it is and just leave it white. But what is important is, oh, sorry, that we um, have some control over how shiny the object is, right? So if I set this to one, it just stays the same. But as I increase this factor, the object will become more and more shiny because the values get compressed. And now you can see that it looks really shiny. And this is sort of like our shininess factor. Right. So let's set this to something like 40. And we can also make the specular brighter by um, just adding a multiply and then set this to something like um, 10 to make the highlights brighter. Right. So we just need to add the specular highlights on top of the um, diffuse color. So this is just the diffuse color. Then we can add the highlights on top. And now you can see that all of a sudden the object looks sort of shiny. And then we can change with these values. To get a um, different kind of shininess. So this is the basics of the phone shading method. This looks really clunky. That's why I'll give you the blend file with the organized node group in it. But there's one final thing that we can do. It's if I add another add node here and copy this mix RGB or just RGB code. You can see that everything suddenly got brighter. So this is what um, we call the ambient, ambient light. So let's um, change the saturation to zero. And the reason we're adding this is because we don't want um, the parts where there's no diffuse color to be completely black. We want to simulate some kind of bounce lighting. And to do this, we'll just add a color to everything. But really, this is just the same thing as changing the strength here. So right, if I change this to one, then this would add like um, a value of one to um, this, to the whole object. But I'm not sure if it's working now because we're not using a BSDF. So probably the background isn't influencing the objects itself. But this is really just what's called ambient lighting. So maybe we could rename this to diffuse specular. And then finally, we can change this to um, ambient. Now let's say you want to add multiple lights. Then what you would do is duplicate this whole setup like this. And then add these together. And then this would be the, we don't want to add the ambient to both of them because the ambient gets added after we've done this thing for all the lights. So let's move this light around. Something like um, one, one, zero. So as you can see, there are now multiple lights and by changing the position of the lights, we can get a different look. So yeah, the more lights you add, the more times you duplicate this, but really when you make it into a node group, it's just a matter of changing the, this value. It's just a quick example. So yeah, um, sorry. 
So this is like, so if I select everything and I press period, you can see this is basically what's happening in this node group as well. We're having the diffuse part, the specular part, checking whether it's greater than zero or not, raising it to a power, of the shininess, then multiplying it by another factor, which is how bright the specular part is. And then we're taking the diffuse color, multiplying by the diffuse factor, then adding the specular part, Using, we have a specular color in this one, but most of the time I just set it to white. And then at the end we add the ambience. So if you wanted to have, be able to add multiple of these for each light, then um, you would have to remove the ambient part from this node group. So this gives us really fast control. So let's see, you want blue specular highlights, maybe not that bright, something like that. There we go. We want to decrease the ambient ambient light, make it less bright, um, increase or decrease the brightness, less shining, sorry, something like that. And then this normal, we don't have to use the normal directly. We can add a bump node. You can see this as like a very basic VSD principle shader, right? So you can change the normals if you want. You can change the incoming to have like a fixed camera. So yeah, obviously you can change the color. So that's the basics of phone shading.